What is happening guys, it's Modern Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 overview. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the progress updates towards the PS5 jailbreak that have happened over the past few days. There has been a few developments, mainly for the BDJ implementation of the exploit. Up until now, we've mainly been focusing on the WebKit implementation by Spectre, because that's generally the most convenient implementation of the exploit that we have so far to use. You know, you can just run a web page and load the exploit that way and inject payloads. However, there has been some work going on recently with the Blu-ray drive exploit method. And we're going to take a look at some of those updates here in this video. So first of all, we have uh, Hammer83 here who has released a PS5 jar loader. And this has also been implemented into John Tornblum's BDJ SDK samples here, PS5 jar loader, as well as PS5 kernel data dump. So what we have at the moment is we have improved stability with the Blu-ray drive exploit, the John Tornblum version, as the Slayer's Gore V1 was pretty unstable, and I haven't really seen that many updates to make it more stable recently, but the, this one here from John Tornblum is pretty stable. I haven't had any crashes so far, and I've loaded the exploit a couple of times. Also, we have the ability to dump kernel data, and also the PS5 jar loader allows us to actually run jar files directly on the PS5, instead of having to, you know, convert them to ELF payload that you could then load with Spectre's exploit. So here you don't need to do that. You don't need to use the SDK to convert it to an ELF file. You can just load the jar files directly. So it has some benefits there as well. So we're going to take a look at that here in this video. I've already gone ahead and compiled these projects into an ISO, and I've got a zip file here that I'll provide in the video description that you can just download. So we just extract it here. There's two ISOs. There's one for the jar loader and one for the kernel dump. And that's another thing I forgot to mention as well is that this will also load the debug settings just like Spectre's exploit. When you load it, it will just automatically enable the debug settings for you. So that's been added to this kernel dump ISO as well. So all we need to do is extract this ISO out here. And we're going to go ahead and first of all, open up image burn. So to actually get the exploit running, of course, it works with a Blu-ray disc. So you need to insert a blank Blu-ray disc into your computer and then go to write image file to disc. You drag the ISO into image burn here and make sure the file system set to UDF 2.50 and then you should be good. We've got our Blu-ray disc inserted. Preferably you want a Blu-ray rewritable disc, which is a BD-RE disc, which means you can write to the Blu-ray disc multiple times whereas the regular BD-R disks are only writable once. Once you've written any data to that disk, it cannot be written to again. So preferably you want the rewritable disks, the BD-RE disks. They do not have to be dual layered disks. I have heard that rumor somewhere. Uh, that's not required. Just any you know regular Blu-ray BD-RE disks will do. And then we can just go ahead and click the button to write the image file to the disk. We'll click yes. And now we're writing the kernel data dump ISO to the disk. And of course, this works on the same firmwares as Spectre's exploit. So, you know, all of those firmwares that seem to be supported on Spectre's exploit should work here with this as well, up to firmware 4.51. So what we're going to do now is eject the disk and put it into the PS5. Okay, so here we go. So if we switch over to the PS5, you can see I don't currently have the debug settings enabled. We are on a stock system. I do have the debug settings link in here, but without actually enabling the debug settings, it will just say that something went wrong so we're going to go ahead and run the disc player and let it load the exploit i mean this version of the exploit might actually be more stable than spectres because again this is i've still not had any crash so far or any fail so far in trying to actually enable this exploit because as you can see there with the message that popped up it has worked it's enabled the debug settings and again, I still have not had a single failure so far with this exploit, this implementation, whether using the jar loader or whether I'm using the debug settings enabler or kernel dumping, whatever I'm using, it just works fine every single time so far. Maybe I've just gotten lucky. Maybe there is, you know, a percentage chance that it will fail at some point. But so far, every single time I've loaded this, it's worked 100%, which is even better so far than Spectres, because even though Spectres is very good as well, it's like a 90% success rate at this point or something. It still fails from time to time. So anyway, if we head back to the home menu and then if we try and access the debug settings again, you can see that the debug settings have indeed been enabled. So we can now load the debug settings from the Blu-ray disc exploit just as we can with our WebKit exploit as well. 
So if we hop back in here, you can see it's still running. And that's another advantage of the Blu-ray disc exploit over the WebKit exploit, because with Spectre's WebKit exploit, you can load it, uh, load the exploit. But then if you have to come out of the web browser for whatever reason to get back to the home menu to change something, then if you want to load the exploit again, you'll have to go through the whole process of reloading the whole exploit again from scratch. Whereas with the Blu-ray disc exploit, you can just exit out to the home screen, do whatever you want to do, then head back into the disc player and it will resume where the where the exploit left off without having to, you know, reload it again from scratch, which is pretty handy. So as you can see here, we have the kernel dump running as well. We've got a kernel dump server on port 5656. So I'll show you guys how to utilize that real quick. So if we switch back over to the computer, we're going to run Ubuntu or some Linux distro using the Windows subsystem for Linux. You can, of course, use other methods, but we're going to use Netcat to do this, which needs to run through Linux, although there probably is a Windows version or something similar. You can probably use SoCat uh, for Windows if you prefer, but I'm just doing this for quickness. So all we're going to do here is enter the command that will also be in this folder here inside the readme for the kernel dumper. So in the kernel dumper here, it gives you the command for Netcat. So if we copy that command, I'm just going to change the directory to my desktop real quick. So I'm going to do forward slash MNT, forward slash C, forward slash users, forward slash my account name, forward slash desktop. So I'm going to head in there and then I'll write it to this location here. So if I paste in the command, we've got echo, the amount of bytes again that we want to actually dump. And then of course the PS5's IP. So we need to change that to our PS5's IP address which in my case is going to be this IP address right here. And then 5656 for the port number and then the file that we're actually writing the data to, which is going to be called kernel.data. So if we try that, you can see it's creating the file right here. And if we go to properties, you can see there is data showing up. So it is actually dumping the data to that file right now. Okay, so you can see it's finished there. That dumped about 16 megabytes. So we can check to make sure we have valid data in there. If we load this into a hex editor, so as we scroll down, you can see there is indeed different data in there. So it has successfully dumped that portion of memory, that kernel data. So we do have the ability to dump the kernel data here with the Blu-ray exploit as well, which is one of the first things that the uh, WebKit exploit from Spectre implemented. They had a RPC server for reading and writing, uh, which wasn't very stable. And then they also had the kernel dumping uh, portion as well. So yeah, and it is just about the same speed. It's pretty slow. It takes a while to actually dump the data and that's on a wired connection as well. So that's what that ISO does, dumps the kernel and also enables the debug settings. But we also have the jar loader ISO as well. Since that's a separate ISO, I'll have to rewrite that to the disk to show you guys that one as well. So we'll go ahead and eject the disk and we'll pop it back into the computer. And since it's a rewritable disk, we can just write the other ISO to the disk. So we'll go ahead and write image file to disk, BDJ, debug ISOs, we'll take the, the jar loader one and load that in and write that to the disk. As you can see, data on the disk will be overwritten. We'll click yes to continue. So it only takes a few seconds to actually write the data to the disk since it's not that big. However, if you've never written to the disk before, you get zeroing sectors. It takes a long time to zero sectors when the disk is blank, when you're first writing data to it. But once data has been written to the disk and then you go to write to it again, if it's a rewritable disk, it only takes a few seconds to write. So we now have that jar loader ISO written to the disk so we can take the disk out and put it back in the PS5. Okay, so switching back over to the PS5 here, you can see we are good, disk player is ready. So we're gonna go ahead and launch the disk again. And this time we should get a different notification. There we go, launching jar loader server on port 9025. So first of all, we're gonna go to Ubuntu so we need to load a Linux distro on the computer using like WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux. So with that, I've also included in the BDJ uh, debug ISO, I'm including this uh, test file. So this is a hello world test file, which just prints out the hello world back to the terminal, but it executes it on the PS5 to make sure it's working. So this is a little test file that we can use. So first of all, we need to um, compile this and get this ready. So, so I'm just gonna navigate to that directory right here. and then we should be good. So all we need to do is enter the commands that are in the readme file for the jar loader. So here we have PS5 jar loader. And then if we go down here, we've got make-c hello world jar loader. So we're gonna copy that and right click to paste it in here. 
And there we go, that executed that, creates the class file and the Java file. So now all we need to do is do the next command to actually add our PS5's IP address. So we'll right click on that one, paste it in, change PS5 host to the IP address of the PS5. So 137.177, press enter. And then finally we enter the last command, which actually sends this to the PS5 to execute. So we'll press enter. And there we go, you can see it printed out hello world right there. And it has indeed executed that on the PS5. It sent it to the PS5's IP address on port 9025, the hello world.jar file that executed on the PS5 and then it returned back uh, the hello world output back to the computer. So there you go, you can actually load raw jar files there on the PS5. Um, for more complicated jar files that, that add libraries and stuff, it is a bit more complicated. You, there is more information on the GitHub page about how to do that with more complicated jar files. But that's one way you can do it. You can load them directly using this exploit or you can go down the route of using Spectre's WebKit exploit and converting them to a payload like an ELF file and loading it that way instead. But this is just another option. So these are some of the developments that we've got so far using the Blu-ray disc exploit because I do want to cover that even though it's not the preferred exploit that people are using right now. It's just good that we have a second option uh, and you know, you never know the Blu-ray drive exploit, the user land exploit supposedly more powerful than the WebKit exploit. So maybe some more things could be done with, with this exploit in future that perhaps might not be possible with the WebKit version. So it's always good to stay on top of the Blu-ray disc exploit as well, even though most people are using the WebKit version for now anyway. So that's what we've got so far. We've got a more stable Blu-ray disc exploit that can allow you to load the debug settings as well as a jar loader for executing jar files on the PS5 and a kernel data dumper as well, all built in and potentially more coming soon. So I so hope you guys enjoyed this little update. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.